Hi, everybody. This topic is going to be about off-chain data and its relevance to the NFT space. This is called IPFS, the global CID. I am Matt Ober. I am the co-founder and CTO of Pinata, and we are the easiest way to use IPFS. At our core, we are an IPFS pinning service that runs IPFS infrastructure, but we started off as Ethereum developers building blockchain applications. So the other week at Pinata, we were working on creating an NFT on Ethereum. If any of you have been trying to deploy smart contracts recently, you're probably gonna be familiar with what we experienced. To deploy a very basic NFT token contract, it cost us over $200 in Ethereum. Were we perfectly optimized? I mean, of course not, but the contract was quite simple. And then even crazier, when we tried to buy our own token on the network, major wallets were estimating that would have cost anywhere from $50 to $1.2,000 to buy our own NFT, which is pretty crazy. Now, while gas prices are necessary to run Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0 will probably solve a lot of these problems, I'm bringing up this story to point out one thing, and that's that storing any amount of data on chain that is more than absolutely necessary is gonna be counterproductive to building a good application on Ethereum. So what should you do as a blockchain developer? The obvious answer is going to be to put your larger data like images and documents off chain. And then what are the benefits of putting this data off chain? Well, to start with, it's exponentially cheaper and can often be accessed quicker than on chain data. For this reason, many projects are choosing to store their off-chain data in somewhere like Amazon S3 or Dropbox. And after all, storing your off-chain data in a simple S3 bucket seems pretty tempting when the alternative is going to be spending thousands of dollars per megabyte of data stored on-chain. Uh, what are you sacrificing when you store your off-chain data in a traditional web system like S3? Uh, to put it simply, you're giving up pretty much everything that makes blockchain and Ethereum so valuable. Your off-chain data isn't cryptographically secured or verifiable. And finally, your off-chain data isn't accessible in a decentralized manner. So again, I mean, what are you to do? The best answer is to secure as much of your off-chain data on IPFS as possible. Uh, so why is this? Why is IPFS better than a traditional web system like S3? Let's start from the top. IPFS, or the Interplanetary File System, is what's known as a content addressable file system. What this means is that files uploaded to the network are addressed by the file itself instead of where the file, file is located. Let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. When you are a computer and you upload data to the IPFS network, IPFS is going to provide you back a unique hash, otherwise known as a content identifier or a CID. If you upload the same piece of content again, it's gonna run through the same hashing algorithm and it's going to give you back the exact same CID. This is deterministic in what makes IPFS so valuable. When you want to grab your data from the IPFS network, you simply provide that same unique hash or CID back to IPFS and it will return the data that you asked for no matter where it's stored at. And this can be done in a variety of ways. So for example, you can run a node as part of your application that directly interacts with the IPFS network, or you can use one of many IPFS gateways that exist for users to retrieve content uh, from the IPFS network directly via in-browser or via an API. The important thing to note here is that you're not restricted to accessing uh, the IPFS content on a singular gateway. You can access the same piece of content on any gateway using the same CID. This is where the decentralization comes into play for IPFS. With all of these different ways of accessing your content though, how do we know that we're getting right, are we getting back the right content? And this is through the CID, of course. We need to be able to trust the data that we're retrieving. A content CID natively allows you to trust the data itself instead of who, where, or what that data came from. So why is this CID so trustable? When you add a file to IPFS, it starts by breaking down the file into multiple chunks that are then ran through a hashing algorithm. If there are more than one chunks for the file, a base CID is created that points to all of the children CIDs the file is composed of. 
And if you upload the same file two times in a row, you're going to be receiving the same CID back twice. However, if you change even one pixel or byte of your file, that CID is going to be completely different. So then when you retrieve a file from the IPFS network, you ask for it directly by that CID. And as an IPFS node retrieves the content it's asking for, it's verifying that content in real time to make sure that it matches the file's CID. This means that you know with certainty that when you're retrieving a file, you know that it's the original file that was uploaded and that it hasn't been tampered with. And then when combined with Ethereum, IPFS allows you to cryptographically secure, verify, and distribute your data globally based on where it needs to be for your Ethereum application. IPFS is the peanut butter to Ethereum's jelly. Let's take a real world example here with NFTs. On this slide, you can see that we have an NFT that is pointing to a traditional web technology URL that reads myserver.com slash blue pinata. Uh, this can point to the blue pinata image that we're intending this URL to point to, but it can also point to two other different things. Uh, the file could be deleted or it could have been moved, at which point you'll receive a 404 error indicating the file can't be found. The other solution or problem here actually is that you could point it to a purple pinata behind the scenes and still have the blue pinata URL point to it. So this is swapping out the underlying image behind the scenes and is not what you want in an NFT, which is supposed to be buying the content itself and not a URL link to you know, content that could change at any point in time. So how are IPFS CIDs different and how do they secure your NFT content that you are paying for? With CIDs, uh, the NFTs have a verifiable link that cannot be changed. With the CID, you're pointing to the content itself. So when you're pointing to uh, the CID for your blue pinata, you're pointing at the content identifier itself. This means that you're only guaranteed to ever retrieve that blue pinata back from the IPFS network. You'll never receive a, a 404 or a purple pinata, as long as the image is on the IPFS network. We'll touch on this a little bit later. So uh, another real world example here. Let's say that we have a document for some sort of legal transaction. We would hash this on the IPFS network and we would put this hash on Ethereum. At a later point in time, if we need to verify that content, some person, in this example, a lawyer, would look at that hash on chain and then they would retrieve that content back from the IPFS network and they are guaranteed to get back that same content that was initially uploaded. And this ensures, again, this tamper-proof verifiable content that's something like the legal system would rely upon. So we had talked about what happens uh, if the file goes offline and why it's important that you make sure that content is always available on the IPFS network if you want it to be uh, retrievable. So this asks the question then, who is responsible for data on IPFS? So with Ethereum, a minted NFT or other transaction on chain exists forever once that gas fee is paid to put it on chain. When a token or transaction happens between two addresses, the address doing the action pays to make that happen. But this isn't true with IPFS. A token or transaction can happen on Ethereum without passing the, ver or the responsibility of that IPFS data to the next person. So this begs the question then, again, who is responsible for the data on IPFS? Should the platform, the creator, the buyer, the seller, who should be responsible for this data? How should responsibilities be defined? This is the biggest friction point we see with all of the devs building on Pinata and a blockchain trying to figure out who is going to be responsible for that data on IPFS. So you need to define who is responsible. Let's return to this NFT example. Uh, NFTs can be transferred between different accounts on chain. And then a platform might mint the token for the creator. The creator might sell the NFT to a buyer who then may sell it to another buyer at a later point in time. In this process, no one has defined who is going to pay for that off-chain NFT data to exist. There's a disconnect here. Again, should the platform, the creator, the buyer, a collaboration of all three of them? Because data is cryptographically secured on IPFS with a CID, 
and ownership of that CID can be attached to a token or an account, you need to define who should pay and when they should pay for IPFS data associated with that on-chain transaction. In most cases, this is going to be the person that cares about the data the most. Uh, in beginning, this is often the artist or the app platform. But similarly to how DaVinci is not responsible for the Mona Lisa, and instead the museums that are currently holding the Mona Lisa are responsible for its upkeep, uh, artists should not be responsible for their NFT data long-term. However, over time, as asset ownership changes, the buyers of these digital assets may want to host the content themselves to make sure that it never goes offline. Now, there are two good ways of making sure your data stays online as an NFT owner. It's either by hosting it yourself, by running your own nodes, or by paying somebody else to keep it online for you. If you don't want to host your own node and want to start hosting your data right away on IPFS for any project you may be working on, consider checking out Pinata to get you going pretty quickly. Pinata developers are gifted one gigabyte of free storage to help you get started. And you're able to quickly get started through an easy to use API that lets you store your data on IPFS. Uh, we've been solely focused on IPFS for nearly three years and our entire mission is making IPFS as easy as possible to work with. And then for projects that need additional performance and speed, we also do offer dedicated host nodes and gateways to give your users the extra speed that they deserve when working with IPFS. So in conclusion, uh, CIDs allow applications and users to define, transfer, and share responsibility of data globally. By building your blockchain application and timestamping IPFS CIDs on-chain, it creates a way for you and your users to trust your off-chain data with the same level of trust that you would expect from full blockchain applications. And with that, happy pinning. I'm Matt, and I'm from pinata.cloud, and we are the easiest way to use IPFS.